Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. We have our friend Tamara Kelly with us today, and we'll be learning to make the Love Knot Crochet Afghan. My name is Renee L. from Yarn Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Please feel free to drop your questions in the chat, and we'll make sure that Tamara answers them. While we're getting ready to kick things off, let us know where you're watching from. Over to you, Tamara. Okay, thanks so much, Renee. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamara from Moogly, and I'm really excited today to be joining you for this class. We're going to be doing this. Is, they always have long titles. Let me make sure I get it right. The Bernat Love Knot Crochet Blanket. So if you've heard of the Love Knot before, it's also known as Solomon's Knot. Um, I have no idea why it's called either of those things. Those are just the names they've gotten over the years. Um, but it's the same stitch. And for whatever reason, it's been associated with love and Valentine's Day. So is the perfect time of year for it. To make this pattern today, we'll be using Bernat Blanket. We have a beautiful pink color. I've got a little darker color though. If this doesn't show up well here, we'll see how it looks on camera. Um, but perfect for Valentine's Day. And it's the same color shown in the pattern. It's called tan pink, um, very pretty color. You'll also need a USL eight millimeter crochet hook. This one happens to be by Susan Bates. Um, I also recommend if you have them, some stitch markers might come in handy. Um, and other than that, I will be using a tape measure today, but you probably won't have to use a tape measure for yourself. Well, let me show you my little trick that I use um, for the Solomon's Knot using a tape measure. So you can measure your own fingers if you want to, but I think it'll work for just about everybody. So just as a little sample right away here, this is the type of fabric we're going to be making today. This is the type of fabric. I wanted to hold it up here in front of the camera, not just on the table, so you can see just how lacy it is. There's lots of space in this pattern. That's just how the Love Knot or Solomon's Knot is. It's meant to be a really lacy pattern. If you wanted it to be not as lacy, you could try you know, a smaller yarn, a little tighter hook, and you can try making the actual Love Knots themselves smaller. So. Let's go ahead and switch over to the hand camera and I'll show you how to get started. Let me move that so we're nice and centered here. That is a little pale there on camera. So if this pink just flares out too much, I've got a darker color I can pull up here in a moment. But we'll take a quick look here. This is the pattern that we're making today. Again, you can see it is a really lacy and airy uh, stitch. It's just the way this stitch tends to be. There's also a nifty little diagram here, but I will tell you this stitch is one of those stitches that when I was first learning to crochet and I tried it, it really, it broke my brain a little bit. I really had to put it aside and come back to it a little bit later. Of course, back then we didn't have YouTube or videos to help us. So I think this will be a lot easier for us today. This pink does look a little too pale on the table. So let me try some blue here and see. I think this is going to be a little bit easier for us to see. The pink is awfully pretty, but with the uh, bright lights and the camera here, it's just a little, a little too pale for us to, I think, see just how we're doing it. So first things first, of course, we need to find the end of our yarn. We want to make our foundation chain. And I want to point out that this pattern includes that stitch multiple, which is always super helpful. So this pattern is worked over a multiple of four chains plus two. So if you want to make it the full size as written in the pattern, you can start with a chain of 90, or you can just count to four over and over again, chain four, chain four, chain four, until you have the width you like, and then chain two more. There is also, for those who prefer, a chart um, on the second page of the pattern, in addition, of course, to all the written instructions. So let's go ahead and make our foundation chain. Now, I'm not going to be chaining 90, of course. That would be far more than an hour's worth of class. So we're just going to make a small sample here today. So I've got my slip knot on my hook. And let's go ahead and make a little short foundation chain here. We'll go one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Let's do one more repeat. One, two, three, four. And then those last two. One and two. Probably the easiest way. That way you don't have to make a gauge swatch or measure it out. You can just crochet or chain rather to the width of the blanket you want. So for the first row for this pattern, we're actually going to start with a row of solid single crochet. It's just going to be a lot easier to work into because we're going to have some kind of floppy chains here. And this gives us just a really nice solid foundation. 
So when I work this foundation into this foundation chain, I really like to work into the back hump, which is the underneath part of the chain, but you can work into whatever part of the chain you like. That said, that back hump is going to be really important later when we're making those knots. So you do wanna kind of take your time and look. If you are a newer crocheter, this is the top of the chain where it sort of looks like nested Vs. It's a little harder to see in this yarn because it is fuzzy. But on the back, we've got the row of humps like that. And that's something we're going to be looking for a little bit later as well. For now, we just want to make a solid row of single crochet. So we'll skip the stitch closest to our hook and work a single crochet in each stitch after that. Like I say, this just gives us a really nice solid first row to work into here with all our love knots. Because it is such an airy and lacy stitch, this just makes it a little bit easier to get started. So whatever number you chained, whatever your multiple of four, four plus two is, then since we skip the chain closest to the hook, the first row will have one last less stitch. My goodness. So if you follow the instructions, you start with a chain of 90 at the end of row one, you'll have 89 stitches. So I just need to get my single crochets all worked in here. Let you guys get yours in there too. Work all the way across here. And then for row two, we'll be able to jump right on in to our love knots or Solomon's knots. If somebody, and I will tell you what, if one of you do know the story of why they're called Solomon's knots or love knots, do drop that in the chat because that is one thing I meant to look up before tonight's class and forgot to do so, but I've always been curious about. All right, there we are. So row one, simple row of single crochet, right? Easy peasy. Row two, Let's go ahead and get a stitch marker ready right there. We've got a crochet stitch marker, sort of looks like a little safety pin. These ones are kind of see-through, but you can see there, we just wanna make sure they're the kind of stitch mark that opens. It's not required, just gonna make it a little bit easier. And we just wanna have it handy. So now we're going to begin row two. Row two starts easy enough, chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, however you prefer, and single crochet right in that first stitch. So just to get ourselves in the habit, let's go ahead and put our stitch marker right in that first single crochet right there. It's always gonna be helpful with this pattern to mark the first stitch of each row. And that will be a little bit more obvious here as we continue. So now we're ready to make that first Solomon's knot or that first love knot. And if we look at the instructions on the um, written pattern, it says pull up loop on hook to three quarters of an inch or two centimeters tall. Yarn over and pull through loop, maintaining length of first loop, extended chain made. So that sounds a little confusing. And this graphic may or may not be helpful. So I'm gonna try and bring it up real close here to the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. We want to pull this loop up to about three quarters of an inch. Now, do we want to pull out the measuring tape every time we make one of these stitches? Absolutely not. So when I was practicing this, I pulled out my ruler and I said, how can I easily me measure three quarters of an inch over and over again? Well, luckily for me, and I will bet for most of you too, if I do a good pinch on that ruler, a pinch is just about just under three quarters of an inch. So I've got built-in measuring tape basically in my hands right here. Now, will every loop be exactly the same? No, but that probably wouldn't have happened if I did break out the ruler for it anyway. You know, it's yarn. It's gonna vary a little bit as you go. So we want to pull up that loop to about the height of a good pinch there. Just about the right height for us to pinch that loop of yarn. Maybe a little bit taller, makes it just a little bit easier, but that one pinch should be about three quarters of an inch. Now, I do wanna say, if you work other Solomon's Knots patterns, they may have you make a much longer loop. I've seen Solomon's Knots where it called for a two inch loop um, before you finish the stitch. Um, possibly you could go even higher. You might go smaller if you've got a thinner yarn. Um, so you will we'll need to read the pattern instructions for each individual pattern when you make these. But for now, that pinch or so right there is just about right. Now. We've got our big, tall, extended loop here. What we want to do is we're going to go ahead and yarn over to turn it into a chain, right? 
But as you do that, I want you to take your non-hook hand, your non-hook fingers here that we kind of measured our pinch with and grab that loop right there. Let me pull that real close. So I've pulled it up to three quarters of an inch. I yarn over and as I pull that through, I'm just gonna keep my fingers pinched on that back loop. That is right there, the back loop of our chain. And the reason I do that is because to finish it off, what we do is we insert our hook right under that back loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through two. And that is a completed Solomon's Knot. Now we're going to be making quite a few more of these. So let's go ahead and do another one because our instructions say to do that twice. Again, can be very confusing, but we just start it right again. We pull this loop up about three quarters of an inch. We can use our fingers to pinch and say, yep, that looks about three quarters of an inch. And as you go, you'll you know see the eyeball of it. Just as you begin, you can kind of take your time and see, does that seem about the right height? It does. So then we yarn over, pull that loop through, insert our hook right underneath that back loop. So on the other side of my hook, on the back of my hook would be the top two loops of that stitch, the V we're used to working under. Yarn over, pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through two. So it's sort of like, you make a big tall chain and then you work a single crochet under that back hump of it to lock it all together. So now we've made two love knots or two Solomon's knots. So to come back to our pattern here, we skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, and single crochet in the next stitch. So let me do that. I was reading and feeling at the same time. One, two, three, single crochet in the next. There we go. So we've made a single crochet and two Solomon's knots or two love knots and then another single crochet, just like that. So we're just going to continue that all the way across. Two Solomon's knots, skip three, single crochet in the next. So we're gonna do that a couple more times here together. But before I do that, are there any questions I can answer right up front? Sure. Um, I think this is a great question on how to work with the yarn. And this is something that I also came into when I first started working with Bernat Blanket. Um, hmm. And that's, do you have any tips for with a super fuzzy yarn? It's sometimes a little bit harder to count the chains or to get the correct bump. What are your, do you have any tips? Um, I will say if you are a very beginner, for sure, then, you know, pick a smoother yarn to begin with. If it's your first time making the love knot in particular, especially you might want to try it with a smoother yarn just because you do kind of have to work into those different bits. Um, but overall, my advice for fuzzy yarns like this is to make sure you're working somewhere really well lit. Um, having a light background like this is usually a benefit. Of course, you've only got too light of a color of yarn, um, but you know, a contrasting background can be really helpful. Um, and then also I would say just using using your fingers. You, you can feel kind of where each stitch is. And if you look for those little spaces, especially in single crochets, we can really pull those stitches apart. And I always think of it as the little cave that pops up there, that little dark spot that all of a sudden opens up, that is right where we stick our hook. So that can be helpful as well. So using your other senses, using your sense of touch can really kind of help you feel it's like this comes out and then I can feel it pinch back in. I can feel that there's a hole there in the fabric. Other than that, um, or I should say in addition to that, stitch markers. Again, this is really helpful, especially with some of these big tall stitches like this. Using stitch markers to mark the tops of stitches. You could use a stitch marker to mark the top of every stitch or every third stitch. Um, and this is more generalized, but you know, whatever, depending on the pattern you're making, but these can be a really big help too, um, especially to help you keep straight sides. If you have trouble saying, you know, is this the last stitch or is this the turning chain, things like that. Um, those can be a really big help as well. So we've got lots more love knots to make. So let's go ahead and make a few more and we'll see if we've got some more questions here. So I've just made a single crochet, easy enough. Now we need to start our love knot. It's got two parts. Remember, we've got a tall chain and then a single crochet through that chain. So we pull our chain up to about three quarters of an inch. 
We can use our fingers to double check it. We can just eyeball it. We're gonna yarn over and it's just a regular chain at this point, but we want to sort of keep our eye on that back hump so we can go right under it with our hook and make the single crochet. Yarn over, pull up that loop and yarn over and pull through two. So there's another one. Let's make another one. Pull our loop up to about three quarters of an inch. Yarn over and pull through for the chain. Put your hook right under that back loop. Yarn over and pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through two for the single crochet. So we've just made two. So now we skip three stitches again. One, two, three, and single crochet in the next one. Now, on your full size blanket, obviously it's going to be a lot wider. You'll have lots more repeats before you get to the end here. But on our little sample, we've just got one more repeat before we come to the end of row two right here. So let's go ahead and make two more. Pull that loop up to about three quarters of an inch or so. Yarn over, pull that loop through for the chain. Go under the back hump of that chain with our hook. Yarn over and pull up our loop. And yarn over and pull through two. And then we do it again. Pull up our loop, sort of a tall chain there, a tall loop. Yarn over and pull that loop through. Go right under the back hump of that chain you just made. Yarn over and pull up the loop. Then yarn over and pull through two. Skip three stitches. And because we're on our little swatch here, that takes us all the way to our very last stitch. So we just finish with a single crochet in the very last one. There we go. So this is what it will look like at the end of row two. So now we've kind of got an idea of how that's made. If we go back to the chart, you can see that's the symbol right there for our love knot. In this one, row three here, we're going this, back this direction. You see we've got a big tall chain right there with the little, the little plus sign on top that represents a single crochet. So we've got the loop and the single crochet on top. So that is the symbol, the crochet chart symbol for the love knot. So any questions here before I move on to row three, which again is going to be full of love knots. So we've been making plenty more of those. Um, so far, so good. All righty. Okay, so row three is going to be a little bit different. We need to work our way up here. And again, I'm going to go ahead and get a stitch marker ready so I can mark the top of this first stitch. Now, the first stitch of row two and our row four, because row four is going to be an awful lot like, uh, or excuse me, row three is where we're at. Row three. Let me rephrase that, refer get my head around that there. We're on row three. Row three is going to be just like row five. We're going to be repeating rows three and four. Yes, three and four to the end of the pattern. Just want to make sure I had that right. So row, row three <laughs> begins with a chain four, which represents our first stitch or a treble crochet. So we can just go ahead and chain one, two, three, and then four. Now that fourth one is going to be the top of that treble crochet. So that's where I'm going to pick up that stitch marker and put it right under the top two loops of that fourth chain. Then I know when I'll come back for row four, this will be that last stitch, quote unquote, that I work into. So I'll put my hook right back in there and turn. And now we're ready to continue. So now we need to do one more love knot right off the top of this chain four. It's just like when we were making love knots before the second love knot of each set. We don't have to be coming off a single crochet. We just want to kind of grip that last chain there. Pull that loop up. Double check our height. As you go on, it's good. Even if you've got think you've got the hang of it and you're eyeballing it, every once in a while, double check and make sure that your loops aren't just gradually growing or shrinking as you go. Then we've got our loop pulled up high. We yarn over and pull our chain through. Go under the back loop of that chain or the back hump. Yarn over and pull the loop through. Yarn over 
and pull through two. There we go. So row three, <laughs> make sure I got that right. Row three has begun with a chain four and one love knot right there. Now what we're going to do to start creating that mesh look is we're going to single crochet in the center there of that two pairs of love knots. So we don't want to go into um, the chain space necessarily. What we want to do is kind of go into that single crochet area there at the top, right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just find a spot right there in the middle. You see we've got that little bit right here. It's perfect. We stick our hook right in there and make a single crochet. Okay, so let me get that centered again here. You can start to see how the pattern sort of is starting to form. We've had one row that's going to end on single crochets. This row is going to need to be tall so we can make that mesh meet. So chain four, one love knot, single crochet right in the center there. You can see how the center of each one is going to have a really good spot for you to stick your hook right there. So now we need to make two more. Pull our loop up about three quarters of an inch high. Yarn over, pull our loop through. You can see it's just a regular chain, but we wanna stick our hook under that back hump of the chain. Yarn over and pull up our loop and single crochet. Now we do another one. Pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through, go under that back hump, yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through too. Now, we want to single crochet in the center of that next pair. So if I bring that up, we've got lots of little lumps and bumps and spaces here, but this is what, we're looking at these from behind, because remember we made these from this side, so now we're looking at them from behind, but we can see there's one love knot here and one love knot here, and that single crochet there, right in the center, we can put our hook right under those two loops. and treat it just like any other single crochet. Alrighty, so now we need to make two more. Pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through, go under that back hump, yarn over and pull up our loop, finish our single crochet, do it again, pull up our loop, check that height, looking pretty good, yarn over and pull through, Go under the back hump and make our single crochet. And now we single crochet back down here. Now you'll notice as I'm working these, I'm letting this just dangle beneath me. As this continues, especially if it's bigger or if you've got a, you know more weight here, it may twist up on you. So if you find it doing that, you do want to take the time to sort of untwist it. Make sure that it isn't twisted around, you know, before you single crochet, or you're going to get them all twisted up. We want to make sure and just lay it out nice and flat, and then it's not twisted. You can sort of follow the line of V's across the top there. Then we come over to our next set here. Let's look at it. We've got a big leg here and a big leg here, but right in the middle, kind of looks like a single crochet right there. We'll put our hook right in there and make our single crochet, like so. And we just keep doing that all the way across until we come here. Now. Blanket patterns are generally almost always symmetrical. What we do at the beginning, we want to mimic at the end. At the beginning, we had a chain four that represented a treble and one love knot. So to finish off our row, we're going to have one love, love knot and then a treble crochet. So we bring that up, make our nice tall loop, yarn over and pull through, put our hook right under the back hump, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, and now we treble crochet. The one other stitch we need to know besides single crochets and chains. So for a treble crochet, we yarn over twice. And now we've got that stitch marker right in that first single crochet we made in row two, makes it nice and easy. We can put our hook right in there, yarn over and pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two to finish our treble crochet. Then we can go ahead and take that stitch marker out and set it aside for the first stitch of our next row. 
So that right there, pull up on that stitch marker there, you can see that is what it should look like at the end of row three. Yes, row three, <laughs> make sure I'm reading the right row here. And there we have row three. So row one was just single crochets, but we've begun sort of our pattern here with row two and three. So row four is going to be a lot like row two, but we're going to be working into more Solomon's knots rather than into single crochet. Other than that though, rows three and four, we've just made three, we're about to make four, will be the repeat that will take you all the way to the end, ending on a third row repeat. So you'll want to end on a row that started with a chain four when you do get to the full length of your blanket, whatever that may be. So before I do move on to row four, are there any questions I can answer? Um, none so far. Okay. It's also my sneaky time to take a sip of water. So <laughs> every once in a while, got to stop and ask. All righty. If you do have questions, absolutely, please do put those in the comments. I would love to be able to answer those if I can. All right. So row four. We begin again, a lot like row two, like I say, but now we're going to be working into these knots rather than into row one. So officially it's a new row. We start with a chain one and turn or turn and chain one and single crochet in that first stitch. Once again, I'm just going to put that stitch marker right in the top of that stitch. I really, even today, I've been crocheting for 20 some years. Um, I still, when I'm just at home by myself, I will mark the first stitch of the row most of the time, just because I know it's going to save me so much time later on. It makes it so much easier as you go. So we've got our single crochet in our first stitch. It was the top of that treble crochet um, right there. And then we are going to begin our pattern. We want to make two love knots and single crochet in the middle of that next set right there. So let's go ahead and do that together. Pull up our loop, make our chain, go back into that back hump and make our single crochet. So there's one. And there's two. Yarn over and pull through that one. Go into that back hump. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And make our single crochet. So now we'll want to skip over that one and come to this one. We're always going to be wanting to crochet sort of in the middle of that arch. That's what gives us that net pattern. So if you are reading the written pattern, you get confused when it's skip this, skip that. Just know that you're trying to come over into the center of that arch here, right? there in the center where it kind of looks like a single crochet we can go right into we go right into that single crochet then we just keep doing that on across i do have to stop though and pull up a little bit more yarn from my skein we finally ran through all the stuff i already pulled up there we go i did see a question come up earlier about weaving in ends this yarn um you can weave in your ends just as you normally do with any other yarn you don't have to take any special any special steps to weave in your ends with um, this version of Burnett blanket. Alrighty, so there we go. We've got our single crochet in the middle of our arch there. So now we need to make two more. Pull up our loop, double check our size, make sure we're not getting, getting crazy there. Yarn over and pull through, insert our hook into that back hump and make our single crochet. And then we do it again. Pull up our loop, make the chain, go under the back hump of the chain to make a single crochet. With that made, we come over here, find that next arch, find that single crochet there right at the center and put a single crochet right in there. Now, because we're on our little sample here, we've got just two more. Pull up our loop, make our chain, Oop, go into that back hump of the chain and make our single crochet. Next one, pull up our loop, make our chain, go into the back hump and make our single crochet. So now, like I say, we're on our tiny little sample here, but eventually get to the point where the next thing is that marked top of that chain for AKA treble crochet. So now we just single crochet right into the top of that fourth chain. So I love having that stitch marker there, it makes it so much easier to find that stitch and put the single crochet right in there. There we go. 
So now I can go ahead and move that stitch marker out of the way and use it at the top of our next row, first stitch. There we go. So there we have rows one through four of the blanket. So rows three and four are the ones that you just keep continuing over and over and over again until you have the height desired. So let's go ahead and do a couple more rows here, and then I will show you how to work um, the last couple rows. Any other questions I can answer? I see we've got a few more numbers down there anyway. <laughs> Uh, I thought this was interesting. Dawn said, my knots got larger as I went, LOL. <laughs> yeah, and that can absolutely happen. Like I say, it's kind of like, um, kind of like if you don't want to use stitch markers and um, you're just crocheting, you know, a blanket back and forth in rows. Sometimes you end up accidentally adding a stitch or taking a stitch away. The same thing can very much happen with the love knot. You're just going along and all of a sudden they just grow gradually. Um, very normal thing to happen. So just like I would say, if you're making, you know, a double crochet scarf every once in a while, you should stop and count your stitches with these every once in a while. It's a good idea to do the pinch test or however you like to test it out. Very, very easy to have that happen for sure. All right, so I'm starting another row three here. So I've got my chain four. We'll pull up that loop. Make our tall chain and our single crochet. Now remember these rows, when we start with the chain four, we only make one before we come back down and find the center of that first arch right there. And then put our single, single crochet right into the middle of it. There we go. Then we do them in sets of two until we get to that end. Pull up our loop, make our chain, go under that back hump of the chain and make our single crochet. So that combination is one stitch. Now we make our second one, pull up our loop. Looks like I'm getting a little tall there. Just double check my own height. There we go. Pull that one down a little bit. Make my chain and put my single crochet into the back hump. We've made two, so it's time to come back down here, find the center of that next arch, and put our single crochet right in there. Two more, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through, and put our single crochet in it. Pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through, and single crochet under that back hump. Then we come back down to our arch, find the center there, and insert our hook right there in the middle for a single crochet. And now, because this is our row where we started with a chain four, we know we're going to end with just one Solomon's knot or one love knot, and then a treble. So we pull that loop up, make our chain, go into the chain, make our single crochet, and then we treble crochet. So if you didn't see that before, we'll do it again. We yarn over twice, find the stitch we want to work into there. We've got our stitch marker right in it. Insert our hook, yarn over and pull up our loop. We've got four loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So just like a double crochet, but one more yarn over, one more pair to work off. Then we can take that stitch marker out and continue on. But like I say, after that, it's just those same two rows repeated over and over and over again. So you've seen me do the love knot many times now. Um, <laughs> won't count them all up, but several times there for sure. Um, and I think you've got probably a good idea of how those sides work there. We've got a row that begins and ends with a single crochet, and then you've got a row that begins and ends with a treble crochet. After you have made to the length desired, which is in the written pattern, 59 inches, you could go to whatever length you want your blanket to be. You want to make sure to end on a third row repeat. And that is the row we just made. Third row repeat has the chain four at the beginning and the treble crochet at the end. So you want to work until you've got about the length desired ending on this sort of row. Then you can move on to what's labeled next row in the pattern. Let me bring that up so everybody can kind of see where we're at. This is where we've repeated row three and four, ending on a third row. Now we've got the next row. So we've got a next row and a next row. So kind of the last two rows of our pattern here. So for this row, 
we are going to sort of close up some of those spots a little bit. Stop making it a mesh and add sort of a straight line across the top. So to do that, we start with a chain one and turn or turn and chain one and single crochet in that first stitch. Even though we've only got one more row after this, I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker in there to make my life just a little bit easier. There we go. Then our instructions have the same repeat, taking us all the way across here. Beginning right here, we're going to loosely chain three. Now we're not gonna be working back into these individual chains, but we want them to be just a little bit loose so that that top row isn't tight. So just um, take your time with them a little bit. With this yarn, another aspect of working with fuzzy yarns is, you know, the loops don't just pull freely through, right? We have to give them a little bit of muscle. So you don't have to do the high extended three quarters inch loops right, by any means, but just make sure to give it a little tug and make sure that your chains aren't super tight. So there's a chain of three. And then again, it can be a little confusing on the written instructions. Essentially we're skipping all of, her, all of this coming to the center of that next arch. And we just single crochet right in there. So we single crochet, chain three, single crochet in the center of that next arch there. Then we do it again, chain three, one, two, three, and single crochet in the center of that next arch. So you can kind of see how these are straight across now rather than creating more arches. On our little sample here, we're kind of already there. So we'll do our chain of three, one, two, three, and then we'll end up in that final marked stitch will be the top of that chain four. However many repeats of that you need to get across your full size blanket. Stitch marker wanted to join the fun there. Let me get that one out of the way. There we go. So in the previous rows, we would have two love knots and then a single crochet into the row below, two love knots and a single crochet into the row below. For this row, we have a single crochet, then chain three, then we single crochet into the love knots below. Chain three, single crochet into those love knots below. Chain three, single crochet into that very last stitch. So that's created sort of a nice line, but then our next next row, our final next row, we want to have a nice row of single crochet to mimic what we had here at the beginning. Just like we want our ends to be even of each row, we want the same thing at the beginning and at the end to create a really even look. So for this row, pretty easy, we chain one, we're going to single crochet in that first stitch. You can mark this stitch if you want to, but you don't have to. If you do plan on making the edging as written in the pattern, it might not be a bad idea just to let you know exactly where that corner stitch is. And then we work three single crochets in the next chain three space. So as I said, we don't have to work into these individual chains. You don't have to try and get your hook in there. We're just going to go right into that space underneath. So right in there. Pull up our loop for one, two, and three. Then, let me double check our instructions here before I say the wrong thing. Yep, single crochet in the next single crochet. Just wanted to double check. Then, three single crochets in that next chain space. One, two, three and single crochet in the next single crochet. And we just continue that all the way across. If I can find that single crochet, there we go, until we get to that very last stitch again. So we've come to another chain three space. We work three single crochets right in there. There's two and three. And then we've got our last single crochet right in our final stitch there with our stitch marker. So that is the basic pattern for the blanket right there. You can see we've worked our mesh. We've got a single crochet row at the beginning and a single crochet row at the end. Now, if we come over to our written instructions, it will tell you at the end of this row, you should have again, 89 stitches, just as we did at the beginning. Um, again, that's the full sized blanket. 
Um, and then it says to fasten off. And then it says to join with a slip stitch to any corner. So you can decide if you'd like to break the yarn and then rejoin it to that stitch, or you can choose to just go ahead and leave it still attached and get started on that border. It's up to you. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, extra ends to weave in. So I would prefer to go ahead and leave it attached. Now, this row that we just finished here is officially the right side of the blanket. So when you finish that final next row, whether or not you finish it off, this is considered the right side of the blanket. So you can break it off and then join to a corner stitch, but we're kind of already at a corner stitch. So let's go ahead and just stay right here and work a little bit of this edging together. So basically our instructions say to chain one and work one round of single crochet evenly around the edge of the blanket, having three single crochets in each corner. Now, I just made this stitch, so trying to work back into this stitch right here probably isn't going to be kind of pretty. That would pull this chain back. It would just be a little bit messy. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put one stitch in the side of this single crochet row. And then I'm going to continue to single crochet down around this side. When I come back to this point, I can go ahead and put two more there, which would then make it a total of three before I do that join. But I've got a stitch marker, so let's go ahead and put this stitch marker right here in that first stitch of our border or edging there. There we go. And then we can just continue to work on down. Now, right here, we've got a single crochet. I like to work one single crochet in the side of a single crochet. Now, down here, we've got that long treble. Generally, the rule of thumb when working into the edge is you work one single crochet into the, or one stitch, I should say, into the side of a single crochet row, two stitches into the side of double crochet row. So let's put three stitches in the side of a treble crochet row. And I want to, I don't want them all bunched up. I want them sort of spread down across the stitch. So you've got a couple of options. Some people like to work around the stitch as a whole. Some people like to put their hook through the center of the stitch. Again, it's up to you, it's your project. I would recommend you try it both ways and see what you prefer. For now, let's go ahead and just kind of make it nice and easy. I'm just gonna go right here into the top of that stitch for one, and then I'll put two down here along the body. We'll just go right around the whole post, one and two. So that is what that looks like. We'll do the next one a little different and see what we like better. Now we've got a single crochet right here, so I'm just gonna put one right there. Brings us back to another treble row. This time, let's try splitting the stitch a little bit and then we can compare and see which look we like better. We've got the top of our stitch here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put still one right in the top. And then for the next two, rather than going around the whole post, I'm going to just kind of catch a couple of strands of the stitch here. Still wanna get two strands above my hook when I can, just to sort of create a more even look. We'll put one there. We'll just get a couple strands right there at the bottom. Then single crochet in the next single crochet right there. And then we can stop and look. Pull this out a little bit, sort of finger block it a little bit with our hands. So here we have one where we went around the whole post. And here we have one where we sort of split that stitch and worked into the stitch itself. Which do you prefer? Totally up to you. This one's going to be a little bit quicker and faster. This one. I think for this pattern looks a little bit neater, but that's not always the case. There are lots of patterns where I prefer the look of this. So again, whichever you prefer, whichever you enjoy making, you can go into, the, into that stitch, go into that space, whatever you prefer. This one's gonna create a little bit of a chunkier look. This one might be a little bit more subtle. Again, totally up to you. We just continue working our way right down here until we get to the bottom. Now, here, officially it's the bottom of that row, right? But we're just gonna treat it as if it's any other stitch. And right here, you can see one of the reasons I like working to that back hump. Now, even though this is our foundation chain, kind of looks like the top of any other stitch and it gives us a really nice place to work. So this right here would have been the last stitch of our first row, bottom of it, but we're gonna treat it like the top of a stitch. And this is where we put those three single crochets to get us around the corner. 
So there's one and two and three, all three, get that tail out of there, all three into that same stitch. You can see how that really just forced the stitches right up on around the corner. So now super easy when we get to the bottom, we can treat it just like any other row and just single crochet in each stitch on a cross. And then of course we can do the same thing when we get to the other side, work our way across here, three single crochets in there, work our way up the other side, three single crochets in there and work our way on a cross. You remember we put just one there. So you probably only wanna put two in that last one, just sort of a mental note type of thing. So if you wanted to cut your yarn and rejoin to put the edging on, you could. And then you could start with three stitches right in that first one. But like I say, personally, I'd rather save those two ends to weave in and just continue on and put the border right on there without cutting the yarn first. But that's just me. I don't mind weaving in ends. Well, not too much, but <laughs> it's not my favorite part of crocheting. I don't know about you guys. So I saw a couple of comments come through that you like splitting the stitch better. I agree on this one 100%. I think it looks a lot better, but you know, in general, you just got to try it out with most patterns. Do one stitch one way, do the next stitch the other way and see which one you like better. So now I've come to the end here of our first row. So I'm going to put three in here again. I've already got two. So now here's a third one. Oop, there we go. And then we just start working our way up the other side here the same way. And this is where it can be a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a toss up. Splitting the stitch can look a little different than splitting the chain. So again, you might want to try it a couple different ways. Let's do, let's do it both ways on this side since we've got two of them we can experiment with. This one, we'll just go ahead and put them right in that chain space again. One, two, and three. And then of course we need one in our single crochet row there. And then this one, let's try splitting it a little bit. See if we can get right under that chain itself. So one and two. You can see it does take a little bit longer, but we'll see if we like the look better. There we go, there's three. And then we'll go ahead and put this one in here too so we can kind of even it out. There we go. And now we've got two more we can compare. These are the ones worked on the side where it's a chain rather than an actual treble. Not as distinctive, but still just a little bit different. This is the one worked into the space and this is the one worked into the chain. So you can see which one you like better. Then since it's our last one there, I put one in the side, I do wanna make sure I put in that one more before I join and break off my yarn. Now, I did see a question come in. How do you join the next yarn when you run out of yarn and it's time to add that second ball? Because odds are you're gonna be making something a whole lot bigger than this. So let's go ahead and pretend for whatever reason, unfortunately tragedy has struck and I have to switch my ball of yarn while I'm right here at the end of making my edging or my border. I'm gonna cut my yarn and pretend I have run out and it's time for the next ball. So the easiest way to do this um, with this yarn or and with most yarns, wherever you are in the pattern, doesn't have to be on the edging, wherever you're working. What I like to do is start the next stitch. And then when there's two loops on my hook or however many loops, depending on the stitch you're making, if it's a half double crochet, it might be three. Most other stitches, it's going to be those last two loops before the final yarn over and pull through. That's when we take our new yarn, our next yarn, our new ball. Let's see if we can get some use out of our very pretty pink that just wanted to be too pale for, for the lighting today. There we are. Get some contrast on here, might be easier to see. And then I will yarn over with the new yarn and just pull that loop up and through. Then I will let those little tails dangle and continue crocheting with the new yarn right on across. It's not exactly where I wanted to put that stitch, but for now you get the idea. Then you can go ahead and just weave these ends in when you're all done crocheting. I like this method um, for a couple reasons. It makes a really nice smooth thing here. You don't have any knots or anything like that, but it also, if you do happen to change colors, creates a nice clean color change as well. So that is how I would change uh, 
or add a new ball for this yarn. Then, like I say, with this yarn, we can just go ahead and weave our ends in like we normally do. Let me see here. I've got a little variety of <laughs> yarn needles. Let me see if I've got one big enough for this yarn here. I do. It's always a good idea if you get the chance to uh, get a few different yarn needle sizes when you go to Michael's with the big thick yarn. Sometimes the thinner yarn needles aren't quite sufficient. Look at that hook put aside there. But you just want to make sure you've got a yarn needle with an eye big enough to hold this yarn. And then you can just weave in your ends with this one as you normally would. Now this yarn does have a lot of fuzziness to it and that's going to work to your advantage on this um, because it's gonna be grippy. If you use something really slick like Karen Simply Soft, it can be really easy for those ends to sort of unweave themselves. But um, this with this fuzzier chenille style yarn, it's going to have a little bit more grip. It's not going to come out as easily. That said, you still wanna go at least two directions. So I like to go one direction under some other stitches and then back the other direction, either under those stitches or some stitches nearby. Going two directions really will make all the difference in your end weaving in. Then once it's woven in, grab some scissors again here. I just put a little tension on it, pull it out just a little bit here, carefully cut it right next to the project. And then when you pull on your stitches, that end usually just disappears right on in to the stitches themselves. So the final thing on this pattern is the fringe. So let me go ahead and um, cut a little bit of yarn. But before I do that, I've seen a question pop up a couple of times about um, the stitch multiple. And if you wanted to make this pattern wider because it is only 51 inches wide, well, there we are, as written. Um, so you might want it smaller, you might want it wider, whatever it is, you start with that multiple of four plus two. So you can just chain four over and over again until you've got about the width you want for your blanket and then chain two more and then follow the instructions from there, not worrying so much about the stitch counts. Um, were there any other questions I can answer here while I get a couple of fringe pieces cut? Um, Lynn had a question. Should you finish the single crochets in the fourth side along the top of the blanket since there are two rows of single crochets in the bottom row? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I would go ahead and go all the way around and do a second row there. I realize now I did. I did stop too soon, didn't I? Yes, we should have crocheted on up around that corner and then all the way across to here. So you will want to have two rows across the bottom and the top. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to cut a few stri uh, strands here. It says three strands, 12 inches long. Um, I don't have a ruler in front of, well, I do, but we're just gonna eyeball it for now and cut three strands about 12 inches long. And this is actually one of my favorite ways to add fringe. Um, I think it's really pretty and it's really simple and um, adds a really nice touch. That said, the fringe is totally optional. So if you do not like fringe, you don't wanna deal with fringe, absolutely, you can leave it off the blanket. Now, I've got my three strands of yarn. They're about a foot long, I'm just eyeballed it here, because I know I'm gonna trim it up after I put, apply it to my blanket. So I've got the ends lined up, and now I'm just going to fold it in half like this. The other ends aren't quite even, that's okay. I just want to get it folded approximately in half. Now, I cut off some more yarn here so I can get better access to my swatch. There we go. Now we are going to attach the fringe to the blanket itself. So, I always have to think this one through a little bit. Let's go ahead and come in from behind. It says we can add our uh, fringe through every other stitch along the bottom and top. So again, you can do it less often, more often, every stitch, whatever you prefer. I'm going to insert my hook from behind. This is the part that I always have to stop and think about. From behind through my fabric. So this is the right side of the fabric and I put my hook in from behind. Now I'm going to take those three strands that I folded and put the fold, the center of the strands, also over my hook like that, okay? Then I'm gonna carefully pull those three strands through that stitch just a little bit, just get the top there, that loop up and through. 
and I can pull my hook on out of there. And from here, I just like to use my fingers. Some people like to use their hooks. I like to use my fingers. Now we're just going to pull those ends right through that loop, like so. And we want to carefully and gently, you can do one strand at a time if you want to, but you wanna make sure you go through all of them. There we go. And pull that through. And that's the part I always have to think about. We wanna come from behind on our fabric so that we get this straight uh, horizontal part of the fringe in front on the right side of our fabric. Otherwise, this is what it looks like from the back. Still looks nice, but I think looks a little bit nicer from that side. So we want to bring our yarn from behind, pull that loop through, and then just send the ends right on through. After that, of course, you'll probably want to trim up your ends so they're nice and even, depending on the look you're going for. Um, you can use a pair of scissors and just go, you know, fringe by fringe. Or if you want to get really fancy, um, one trick I like to use is using a rotary cutter and a cutting board and a little bit of masking tape. I'll actually tape down all my fringes across and then use a rotary cutter to cut those off nice and even. Again, supplies that you can pick up at your local Michaels. So were there any other questions I can answer here before I uh, finish up today's class? I think we're good. Okay, awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, the love knot takes a little bit of practice for sure. When I first tried it the very first time, I had to give it a little time out, but I came back to it later and then it all clicked and made sense. So I hope this video helps you out and I hope you have a wonderful night. Thanks so much, everybody. They look great. <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone so much for joining us today or this evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is where you are. Um, thanks for joining us again for this live community classroom with Michaels. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Yarnspo. That's Y-A-R-N-S-P-O and tag us. We love to see what you're working on. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye.